morning and welcome to our worship today. I want to thank you for inviting us into your homes. And more importantly, I want to thank you for inviting God into your spirit and heart. So we pray that as we gather together, we would enter into the presence of God. And as we gather together, I invite you to remember, particularly to remember those people who sit alongside you in church and behind you, in front of you. And in your mind and heart, reach out to them as they reach out to you. And at this time, I'm also reminded that as believers in the communion of saints, when we gather to worship, we don't just simply gather with those present, but with all the saints who have gone before us and all the saints who will come after us. And if I think of our small altar at which we will be doing Eucharist, that this altar actually stretches from one end of eternity to the other, from the Alpha to the Omega. And as we do gather for Eucharist, to remember those who gather with us, those in your hearts and lives who have gone before you, and those who are yet to come. And to remember as we worship today, we worship with them all in the presence of Almighty God.
Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affection of sinners. Grant your grace, people grace, to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. 
Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you, cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. And he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. And he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O my people, I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The Word of the Lord. Read Psalm 130. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who would stand? For there is forgiveness with you. Therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for him. And his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord. More than watchman for the morning. More than watchman for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forevermore. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and his sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. And after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, The Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? 
Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus was fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, oh, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you? that if you believed, you would see the glory of God. So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his faith wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord.
Come Holy Spirit and anoint my lips and anoint our ears that your word may be spoken and heard and Jesus Christ glorified here in our midst. Amen. We have in the gospel story, incredible story of the raising of Lazarus. And as I was reading it, thinking about it and pondering it this past week, I was very aware of that line, it's often translation, translated, Jesus wept. Jesus felt great sorrow and sadness. But I think his sorrow probably goes even further because it says that he was disturbed of spirit, which led to his weeping. And I think of where we are at as a nation, as a society, as a world. There is much weeping and sadness in our world right at this moment. And it's in times of great sadness that we feel something of the pain of the world, the suffering of the world. And it's at these times of suffering we can often wonder, where is God? Where is God in the midst of all this pain and suffering? And perhaps even, why does God allow it? Now I have no answer, at least that satisfies me both intellectually and emotionally, as to why God allows it or why it happens. But I do have a sense of something about where is God when it is happening. Now I am also aware that in the midst of that suffering and pain, when it's personally yours, it's often hard to grasp. So where is God in the midst of the suffering? I want you to take a moment and to be aware of the suffering that's going on, and even to be aware of some times when you have experienced experienced enormous suffering, pain, distress. I can think of times in my life when I have been utterly bereft and feeling alone, almost torn in heart. I can think of other times, and just a few years ago, my beloved Kim was traveling out of the country, and I was home all alone with our three cats, and the cats are really Kim's in lots of ways. Um, They just sort of tolerate my existence, Uh, but I was caring for them, and one of them, who was quite elderly, uh, suffered from kidney stones, and he had an attack. And in the middle of the night, he was whimpering and kind of howling. And I picked him up and sat holding and cuddling him. And as someone who loves to help, to be in that moment and just to realize there was nothing I could do. And here was this creature in my arms that was howling in pain. And there was nothing I could do. And in that moment, I was aware of Kat's pain, my pain at not being able to help, and being profoundly aware of all the suffering in the universe. I could hear the mountains, the plates, tectonic plates, grinding on one another and of all the other things that show the brokenness of this world 
of the oceans pounding against rocks, the floods, and just all the, the groaning and anguish of creation that St. Paul talks about. I was aware also of the anguish of human hearts all around the world. It was very dark, that moment of being aware of all the suffering in the universe and that I was one with it. And that is part of the reality that we experience. I think that was part of the reality that Mary and Martha were experiencing. And even that sense of betrayal that Jesus wasn't there when they really needed him. And seeing her pain, what did Jesus do? Jesus wept. And so when I think of those moments of pain and suffering, where is God? God is in Jesus weeping with us. We're also, in some ways, gearing up to hear the whole Holy Week story, Good Friday, and that road to the cross. And I think of Jesus on the cross. And the reason I actually continue to be a Christian, actually, is the words that he said on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken us? And that sense of that cry that each of us has in our hearts in moments of suffering, that Jesus cried that prayer, that scream, why have you abandoned me? And I think of those times when you've done what's right, but to no avail. It's that cry of desolation. That's the cry of a suffering world. That's the cry of people in our country, people in our streets, people around the world at this time. There are many other reasons that people are also in pain in our society. It may not be the virus, it may be hunger. Or a child shot and killed. Or someone losing their life to a horrendous illness. There is no answer to why, from my perspective. But the answer is always that Jesus is there with us, weeping with us. Not to simply take away our pain, but to join us in it. And the culmination of the whole Jesus story is in the ascension. When we believe that Jesus ascends into the very heart of God. And what Jesus does in that moment is takes your and my humanity, our suffering into the very heart of God. The heart of God knows our suffering, knows our pain. And the answer to all of our suffering is God's presence, God with us. To know that we have not been abandoned, even though it seems like it. And that ultimately, as my beloved Kim has told me, 
There's someone who always likes to have the last word. The last word will always be God's word. And that will always be a word of love. And so as we ponder and experience that we are going through as a society, as a country, as a nation in the world, to think about how we can be expressions of God's presence, of God's love, of lifting up a telephone and giving someone a call, particularly remembering those who maybe aren't as well connected by the internet as others, or maybe aren't as socially adept. But to think of ways that we can connect in this time of isolation. And to always remember that in the weeping, we hear Jesus weeping. And in Jesus weeping, we know that we gather and worship a God whose nature is to join with us and to love us. And that ultimately, God and God's love will be the final word. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us, O God, to trust your love and serve your purpose. In our prayers today, we hold in the light of your courage, O God, Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Wayne, our bishop, Dion, our bishop-elect, and all your church. We hold in the light of your will and mercy, O God, our president, governor, and government. And the leaders and governments throughout the world. Behold, in the light of your healing, O God, 
all those who are ill, praying especially for Devin Corbett, Brooke Irwin, Brian Miller, Stephen Minton, Carl Short, Meg Walters, Scott Weaver, Joey Wilson, and those on our hearts today. We hold in the light of your love, O oh God, their families and caregivers. We hold in the light of your wisdom, O oh God, our medical community and public health officials. We hold in the light of your eternal goodness, O oh God, those who have died, especially Timmy Cullen and Janie Rouse. those on our hearts. And for all those who grieve. We hold in the light of your presence, O God, our neighbours. And ourselves. Help us all know that in every storm and tumult there is an inner calm that comes from faith in you, and that from the central heart of peace your compassion flows to make us wise and loving expressions of your presence in the world. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbour. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and those whom you love. A couple of announcements that I'd like to share with you. Um, every Sunday we'll be having service Somewhat like this, maybe different, depending on where we get to technologically and um, circumstances allow. But the service will be available beginning at 8 o'clock on every Sunday. At 10.15 on Sunday, we will actually have a live children's chapel. And you'll be able to zoom into that. And um, there'll be links to that in the bulletin and uh, in, on our website. The other, following the children's chapel at 10.30, we will have coffee with the rector. So I will be gathering with whoever wants to gather with me on Zoom, a cup of coffee, and we will have conversation, dialogue about what's happening in our world and also uh, a reflection on that. And that will be happening every Sunday. So I do encourage you to keep checking the website and also to uh, make sure you've signed up online you scroll down to the bottom of our homepage to, um, for email updates of things as they are transpiring in our community. 
We're also working on um, online Christian formation programs, and we have also started a whole series of telephone circles. Our goal is for everyone in the parish to be called at least once a week, and that is an activity that uh, is, I'm not quite sure how many groups uh, Kelly and Janet have put together, but there's, I think there's over 40. Um, and we're going to be inviting each one of you to call somebody in that group and just to stay connected with one another. And if there are needs that we can meet, uh, to let us know. Um, St. Peter's Cares will continue to be operating and meeting some of the basic needs that people in our congregation and our community may actually have. The staff are all working from home and that does mean that as life goes on, and I think most of the staff are actually working harder getting um, up to speed and all the challenges of online, that means that our overheads continue and I realize we aren't gathering together and taking up a collection. So I really do encourage you to make your offering online and there's information in the bulletin on how to do that. And if you have trouble doing that, um, to give Darlene a call and she'll be happy to um, help you through that process. I know um, my beloved Kim signed me up <laughs> yesterday and so uh, to be able to do that online. It also for me is really helpful because I can easily forget. Uh, There are other announcements in the bulletin that I encourage you to read and to take care of. And as I said, pay attention, please, to the website updates. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercy of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. As I mentioned in the beginning of the service, we don't simply gather here alone. We 
gather at this table with all the communion of saints, all the saints who have gone before and who will come after us. And as we gather virtually around this table, I invite you to gather with, particularly, all the people in the medical field, nurses, doctors, technicians, all the people who are putting themselves in harm's way to care for those who are ill. And that as we gather together to make Eucharist, we give thanks to God for God's love. As it has been made known to us by the medical community. And we offer this Eucharist with prayers for all in the medical community. We care for those who are ill at this time. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin, become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. The night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. 
We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, and the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Remember, O people of God, who Jesus was, is, and will be forevermore. In this bread and wine, we behold the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, broken and shed for our salvation. Beloved Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the sacrament of this altar. I long for you in my soul. To know that I am in you and that you are in me. Though physically isolated from your altar in the sacrament of your body and blood, I receive you spiritually into my heart, to the depths of my being. United with you, help me know that my life is hid with you. O Christ, in the heart of God. Amen. Let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. 
Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the God of creation grant you grace to see yourself as God made you. The God of love grant you grace to value yourself as God values you. The God of life grant you grace to discover God's purpose for you. The courage to live it from the depths of your being. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love and struggle to love now and forever. Amen. And if you're wondering, Oliver the Cat survived at least that attack. Go in peace to love and enjoy the Lord. <laughs>